Hello, welcome to library class. Good to see you again. Now, we're going to talk about snow again this week and I'm prepared. Got, well, well, I'm almost prepared. We're going to start with part of a short poem about snow by Miguel Unamuno. The snowfall is so silent, so slow. Bit by bit with delicacy, it settles down on the earth and covers over the fields. The silent snow comes down, white and weightless. Snowfall makes no noise, falls as forgetting falls, flake after flake. I love that, so calm and beautiful and quiet. It's from a, a poem called The Snowfall is So Silent. I like to compare it to the book we had last week, Brave Irene, which also had lots of snow, but if you remember, it was a snowstorm with a lot of wind crashing around. It's a really nice contrast to the soft snowfall in the poem. Now, do you remember also last week I set you a challenge to find the connection between the name Wilson and this picture of a snowflake? Did anyone find the connection? Let me show you how you could have done it if you didn't have a chance to. So I've come to Kid Rex, which is a really great child-friendly search engine, typing in the two clues, which were Wilson and Snowflake, and let's see what comes up. Ah, the top hit here, Wilson Bentley, photographer of snowflakes, and that's connected to the Smithsonian, which is a really great source for historical information. And there's our answer. Wilson Bentley was the first person ever to photograph a snowflake. We did it about 135 years ago. The story today is about Wilson Bentley, or Snowflake Bentley as it's called here, or in fact Willie as it's called in the book itself because that's his childhood nickname. And, well, I say it's a story, it's really a biography. That is a book about someone's life, in this case, Snowflake Bentley's. If you look at the spine of the book, can you see the letter B? That means it's part of our biography section. And the B, E, N are the first three letters of Wilson Bentley's second name, Bentley. That's how we categorize books in the biography section. Now this biography has been written by Jacqueline Briggs Martin and illustrated by Mary Azarian. And Mary Azarian uses a very unusual way of illustrating. I'll talk to you a bit more about that at the end, but for now I'll just let you enjoy the story. Snowflake Bentley. In the days when farmers worked with ox and sled and cut the dark with lantern light, there lived a boy who loved snow more than anything else in the world. Willie Bentley's happiest days were snowstorm days. He watched snowflakes fall on his mittens, on the dried grass of Vermont farm fields, and on the dark metal handle of the barn door. He said snow was as beautiful as butterflies or apple blossoms. He could net butterflies and show them to his older brother, Charlie. He could pick apple blossoms and take them to his mother, but he could not share snowflakes because he could not save them. When his mother gave him an old microscope, he used it to look at flowers, raindrops and blades of grass. Best of all, he used it to look at snow. While other children built forts and pelted snowballs at roosting crows, Willie was catching single snowflakes. Day after stormy day, he studied the icy crystals. The intricate patterns were even more beautiful than he imagined. He expected to find whole flakes that were the same. There were copies of each other, but he never did. Willie decided he must find a way to save snowflakes so others could see their wonderful designs. For three winters, he tried drawing snow crystals. They always melted before he could finish. When he was 16, Willie read of a camera with his own microscope. If I had that camera, I could photograph snowflakes, he told his mother. 
Willie's mother knew that he would not be happy until he could share what he had seen. Fasting with snow is just foolishness, his father said. Still, he loved his son. When Willie was 17, his parents spent their savings and bought the camera. It was taller than a newborn calf and cost as much as his father's herd of ten cows. Willie was sure it was the best of all cameras. Even so, his first pictures were failures. No better than shadows. Yet he would not quit. Mistake by mistake, snowflake by snowflake, Willie worked through every storm. Winter ended, the snow melted, and he had no good pictures. He waited for another season of snow. One day, in the second winter, he tried a new experiment, and it worked. Willie had figured out how to photograph snowflakes. Now everyone can see the great beauty in a tiny crystal, he said. But in those days, no one cared. Neighbours laughed at the idea of photographing snow. Snow in Vermont is as common as dirt, they said. We don't need pictures. Willie said the photographs would be his gift to the world. While other farmers sat by the fire or rode to town with horse and sleigh, Willie studied snowstorms. He stood at the shed door and held out a black tray to catch the flakes. When he found only jumbled, broken crystals, he brushed the tray clean with a turkey feather and held it out again. He waited hours for just the right crystal and didn't notice the cold. If the shed were warm, the snow would melt. If he breathed on a black tray, the snow would melt. If he twitched a muscle as he held the snow crystal on the long wooden pick, the snowflake would break. He had to work fast or the snowflake would evaporate before he could slide it into place and take its picture. Some winters he was able to make only a few dozen good pictures. And some winters he made hundreds. Willie so loved the beauty of nature, he took pictures in all seasons. In the summer, his nieces and nephews rubbed coat hangers with sticky pitch from spruce trees. Then Willie could use them to pick up spiderwebs jeweled with water drops and take their pictures. On fall nights, he would gently tie a grasshopper to a flower so he could find it in the morning and photograph the dew-covered insect. But it was his snow crystal pictures that were always his favourites. He gave copies away or sold them for a few cents. He made special pictures as gifts for birthdays. He held evening slideshows on the lawns of his friends. Children and adults sat on the grass and watched while Willie projected his slides onto a sheet hung over a clothesline. He wrote about snow and published his pictures in magazines. He gave speeches about snow to faraway scholars and neighbourhood sky watchers. You are doing a great work, said a professor from Wisconsin. The little farmer came to be known as a world expert on snow, the snowflake man. But he never grew rich. He spent every penny on his pictures. Willie said there were treasures in snow. I can't afford to miss a single snowstorm, he told a friend. I never know when I'll find some wonderful prize. Other scientists raised money so Willie could gather his best photographs in a book. When he was 66 years old, Willie's book, His Gift to the World, was published. Still, he was not ready to quit. He would go in snowstorm after snowstorm, always searching for one more picture. And this was true to the end of his days. After his death, shortly after his book was published, a monument was built for Willie in the centre of town. The girls and boys who had been his neighbours grew up and told their sons and daughters a story of the man who loved snow. Forty years after Wilson Bentley's death, children in his village worked to set up a museum in honour of the farmer scientist, and his book has taken the delicate snow crystals that once blew across Vermont past mountains over the earth. Neighbours and strangers have come to know of the icy wonders that land on their own mittens. Thanks to Snowflake Bentley. And here's a picture of the man himself, Wilson Bentley, uh, with his camera there. Now, everything that happened in this book is true. Don't forget, a biography is a story of a real person that actually existed. So there really was a Wilson Bentley who took these amazing photographs. 
Wilson Bentley was one of the first scientists to correctly observe that no two snowflakes are alike. A really important scientific discovery. It's no surprise that he ended up having his own museum in his hometown of Jericho. That was mentioned at the end of the book. I actually looked that up online and the museum is there. You can take a look yourself. And there's a special room where they have many of his photographs and I think his original microscope. Well, that's the end of LibraryCast for this week. Thanks for being here. Now, before I go, I did say a couple of words at the beginning about the unusual illustrations in Snowflake Bentley by Mary Azarian. The reason why they look the way they do is because they're actually woodcuts. That is, the illustrations are cut or carved out of wood and then ink is spread on the wood and paper is pressed on top to get the pictures. And then she paints on top of those prints. If you're interested in seeing how that works, here is a short video about Mary Azarian's workshop where she does a lot of her woodcuts. And here, I couldn't resist, is a quick guide how to make a paper snowflake. That's it. Take care, keep exploring, keep discovering, stay safe, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.